Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Physical Science 110. Okay, today is our uh, first session, and we're going to talk about a few things. First of all, how uh, how we're structuring this so that you have an understanding of what it means to attend live versus watch the recording, what you need to do in either case, okay? And uh, also we're going to talk about the main points in here in this class, namely the syllabus, what's we're supposed to have in this class, what kind of materials we're going to cover and so on and so forth, and the testing and the assignments and everything else. So we need to cover basically these technical things and uh, we're going to go also through, through some of the things that we have due. We already have a couple of assignments that are due next week. In the beginning, we're going to have a uh, kind of a little bit of leeway in terms of the uh, things. Uh, because we have a little bit more time than uh, toward the end. Toward the end, things uh, really need to happen because the semester has to close. So this is basically in terms of uh, what we're going to be covering today. And uh, we're going to actually get into some of the topics that we're going to be covering this week because it's very important to understand how this class is structured and what do we do when we meet on Mondays and uh, how we're going to meet other days and so on and so forth, okay? So this is basically in a nutshell what this is. Again, my name is Buzidi Jamoy. You can call me DJ because people have a hard time saying my name. So it's much easier to basically use those two letters. DJ is good enough for this thing. Uh, I am uh, going to be again your physical science instructor for this semester. I have a PhD degree in physics from the University of California, San Diego, UCSD, not too far from where you guys are. So that's basically where I went to school. I taught a combination of uh, physics, astronomy, physical science. I taught even math and also taught uh, some of the engineering classes, namely programming classes, C++ to be more specific. Uh, for different uh, community colleges. This is the first time for me to be on, uh, on uh, IVC. And uh, actually, I'm uh, very happy to be joining campus. I'm still learning my way through it. As a matter of fact, I still don't have an office assigned to me yet, which is fine. That should not prevent us from doing what we need to do. Because again, the topics are the topics and uh, the activities that we'll be doing throughout the semester will not uh, be impacted. So, uh, and uh, that's basically in a nutshell, basically about myself. Uh, at this point, we're doing the class online. Uh, once we are situated and depending on what the county says and depending also what the college uh, basically uh, says, we're going to see if we can meet on campus, whether for office hours or consultations or whatever we can do if we can, of course, if it's permissible by the authorities number one or also to make sure that we observe all the health, uh, basically guidelines and restrictions to make sure we're not in violation of anything that can jeopardize the health and safety of anybody, okay? So this is in a nutshell, uh, an, an introduction. The topic itself is really big. We're going to be covering so many ideas, so many topics that it's really broad, okay? And it's a lot of materials to be covered in one semester but we're going to make sure that we are going to give each section of this class its due, uh, uh, basically, uh, diligence. It's due uh, what needs to be done for it. Uh, we can divide it into different sections. First of all, there is the physics, in the sense, classical physics. There is also uh, chemistry, which is really applied physics to be more uh, specific. And there is also geology aspect of it, which is really more of an applied physics and chemistry. So it's in a sense applied of these things in addition to field studies. And then we're going to delve into stuff that is related to astronomy. So this is basically in a nutshell what this course covers. Throughout this semester, there will be assignments. As I was mentioning, there was already assignments to begin with. Uh, your participation and, uh, and uh, engagement in the classroom is graded, so it's not an option. And it actually amounts to 10% of your grade, which is very important. That's why it's very important to uh, participate and engage in the classroom. So uh, how can we do that? 
how in the world they're saying this is an online class. Yet I am telling you that we'll be meeting at least once a week live. Okay. Obviously, if you cannot meet live because you have prior engagement, let's say, for example, you're working and your boss says, absolutely not. You're not going to be free around this time, okay? unless you want to, be, to lose your job or you have other uh, arrangements that you have to be somewhere. Okay? In either case, you cannot attend live. I'm not going to force you to attend live. However, you are required, if you cannot attend live, to watch the recorded session. So the fact that you signed up for this class and you paid for it, one way or the other, you are paying for it, it's still, you have to participate and engage in the classroom. So once the recording is available, and once you have time, you need to go and watch the recording. Okay. How can I make sure that you do that? Well, one way for me to do that is we have assignments assigned throughout the live sessions. It could be one assignment, could be two, could be three, could it be even more than that. Is it in the beginning of the, uh, the, the live session or toward the end or right in the middle? I don't know. It could be in the beginning, all of them be in the beginning or all of them toward the end, or all of them toward the middle, or spread throughout in different fashion, okay? We don't know how many they are. I don't, honestly. And they could be uh, in this fashion. So you cannot really avoid watching the entire thing because if you just took note of the first task that needs to be completed, <laughs> put the microphone, can you turn off the microphone? Very good, thank you. So basically, thank you. So basically, uh, so we don't know the type of uh, the, the number of questions. We don't know where they are. So you honestly have to go through the entire, if you are live in here, so you know what's happening, you know exactly what's going on. So there is no thing to worry about the people who are attending live because they will benefit from the fact that they will have this prompts insert and they can right away go and answer the prompts and they don't have to wait for the uh, for the recorded session for those who are watching the record se recorded session they also have to go through the same task namely watch the video from beginning to the end to be able to tell how many assignments or how many prompts there are for that session again you take note of the first one you will find the answer these are not challenges these are not something you're going to go research outside of the session itself. It's actually the answer is we're going to go through it ourselves, okay? So this is not a challenge. All you have to do is make sure you go and fill out those, those, those sessions, those, those questions, okay? And the next one comes in and potentially a third one would come in and so on and so forth, depending basically on how many they are on those five sessions, okay? Then during the live session, I mean, during the, 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 the post, the discussion for the live session, you have room for replies. And we're going to go through this one today so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're going to go there and provide what we just said that you're going to put in those prompts. So you can say, okay, here is the answer to the prompts today. And you can state it, okay, there. If you followed, if you attended live, this should not be a problem. It should be an, an easy thing to do, okay? Well, you might say, okay, somebody else who does not really want to spend the entire time watching the live session, I mean, attend the live session or watch the record session, would want just to copy of what somebody else has posted and modify it a little to make it look like it's not copied and then post it in there. What's the problem? What prevents someone else from doing this? Well, what prevents somebody else from doing this is that you cannot see other posts unless you post yourself. They cannot see other people's posts, number one. Number two, how about that person plays a trick in a sense, they, they, they post some nonsense just to see what other people are talking about because they really don't have that hour or an hour and a half to go through the entire session. So, and then modify their initial post. 
Well, you cannot edit your initial post either, because if you edit it, that nullifies it. So there is really no avoiding. So a person is trying to defeat the system that way, they're going to get trapped anyway. So you really, they really have to watch the recorded session or attend the live session to know exactly the number of prompts and be focused, okay? And, and uh, see how many prompts there are and answer honestly each and every one of them and move on. That way you have fully engaged from the classroom. You're asking, why do we do this? Why do I require that you attend to know what's going on in the entire week, what needs to happen in this class for the entire unit? for that part of the class or watch it recorded later on and make sure I'm making sure that you do that for a simple reason. This is an online class. If we are sitting in person, basically face to face, then I know the people who attend. I can take attendance very easily or give a quiz. Then I can find out who is doing what they're supposed to be doing and who is not. Why is that matters? Because if you don't systematically follow the concepts and they will evolve, we're going to start with baby steps and we're going to be covering tremendous big concepts. If you don't follow those steps, you're going to have a hard time toward the end. So that's why it's very important that we do this thing from the beginning. It's a thing to keep us in check because I can say, okay, and I have seen a time before, where people would say, okay, you know what? I have an assignment to still do in about two weeks. A week later, oh, it's still do a week. I still have time for it. What? It's going to spend probably a couple of hours, maybe at most half a day, and it will be done with. Now comes that last day when you're supposed to work on it. And you realize that, first of all, it requires more time than what you anticipated, and you can't find the resources you need. And there is another assignment that also fell in the same thing. And now there is a pileup of work that needs to be done. A lot of people at that point start to prioritize or give up entirely, and they drop from the class. So in order to prevent that from happening and make sure that we're really on task, I'm trying to have you guys be on basically doing the small things, the big things in small steps, then having to do the big things in just one big lump of thing, which becomes a big challenge. And then we cannot really do things. And at the end we give up or we fail the, 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 the mark of the class. or we don't do well in the class. That is not good. So that is really the, the real reason for it, trying to have these things, this check marks, if you wish, along the way to make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. I mean, of course, if you don't enjoy the class or if you have problems with the class, you may still not continue with us, but that's another reason than having to falter because you could really do the material of the class and you could really benefit from the class. But the only reason is because of the things that started to pile up little by little and they become a tremendous amount of things. So that's really what uh, the purpose for that. Is everybody clear on at least what I'm trying to say in here? Two ways, attend live session, answer the prompts right away, or watch the recording and answer the prompts later on. Okay, very yes. good, very good, thank you. Okay, so the point being in here is, we have to be fully engaged with this classroom, and I'm going to uh, to uh, to uh, share with you basically the uh, the uh, the uh, how this classroom works. Obviously, it's much easier to attend the class live, especially if you are not uh, tied up with other things, and uh, get the answers done and be move move on to something else. That's actually much much easier than everything else, and you'll be. Uh, on top of everything and you should not fall behind. Things at some point become challenging and they become hard. What I really don't want you to do is be lost in these things. That is not what I want you to do. So if you think that you're spending more time than what you should on some the simple thing, do not hesitate to shoot me an email or a message or something like that. We covered this concept, I'm really struggling with it or cannot move on. Can you give me an example and things like that? And that's a benefit of the live session. 
because you could ask those questions then we can go through example one example two example three until we have that hammered down somebody who's really not attending live and they don't benefit from that well, it's going to be an issue because then they will ask later on and it could be answered a lot easier through a live session okay so let me share with you how the class is structured and what you look for when you come into this one on campus. So let me share with you the screen. So this is how the class looks like. Again, one of the things that I found out hard way before in the past is I'm sharing something, I'm talking about it, and people are looking at something else, or they're not looking at it, and there is a miscommunication. So the first question I have for you in here, this is not part of the prompt, by the way, just I want to see a feedback in here. Do you guys look at something that says PHSC 110? At least one person needs to confirm this. Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. So making sure that my share is working, okay? So this is what you do when you come to the classroom on a regular basis. I would say 95% of the time, this is where you're going to be. This is where you're going to spend your time, in the models. Right now, you can clearly see that I am actually in the student view. This is what it looks like to you. Obviously, this is not a real account. It's just a Canvas way of giving me a way for the students on how they look at things. So if something doesn't look right for me in here as a student, I can go as an instructor, fix it, and then come back in here, make sure it looks right. Okay, so this is what you yourself would, would see. The student has never done anything in here. So that's why it's, everything is grayed out with the exception of the first one in here that he or she can go to. And that's exactly what happened to you the first time around. As you start moving on, things start to appear and the, the other things become in uh, the scope. So this is where you would want to go. So when you go home, this is what you see. Oops. Let me go back to student view, okay? So this is what you would see in here, okay? One of the things that you're going to also see is this thing on the left-hand side, or is it the right-hand side, I should say, okay? This is the to-do thing. Sometimes this can be misleading, but this is important because this tells you that something needs your attention big time, okay? Again, this is where I really need to be. This becomes unchecked as you move along, but this is something that is what needs to be taken care of. So if you find yourself working off of the to-do, you are really doing yourself a big disservice because of the fact that you are really working in the deadlines only. You are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. So this is really what you're supposed to be doing. This is important but this is more important in terms of keeping track of your, uh, of, your, uh, of your progress in this classroom. Now, these are announcements that you probably have, at least the first three are announcements that you have had. And these two are discussion things. These ones are graded actually, worth five points. And this is worth 20, point, 20 points. This is due August 16th. This is wrong. It should be August 26th. I'm going to fix that. It's not due today. Okay, so I really need to correct that. So this is wrong. I'm glad that I'm looking at these things in here. So this is August 26, okay? So do not worry about it right now. So it might tell you that by the end of the day that, uh, but if you come tomorrow in here, that tells you that this is an overdue assignment. And that is a typo in here, okay? So again, if you find something like this one, please email me, okay? Trying to get things organized at this one, this, this beginning in here trying to put things together. So please do email me when you see something like this one, okay? Now, this is due August 28th. This is actually, and you will see soon why that is, is actually a two due dates in it. It picks up the last of the two dates only. There is actually August 26th, which is next Thursday. And then that is actually August 28th, which is Saturday. Okay, again, there are some things that I need to be fixing in here. But this is basically the stuff, if you're working off of this, you're actually in the wrong field. 
this is where you should be, okay? If you want to reach me, this is the preferred way of doing it. You go to the inbox and send, send a message to me, okay? I can be reached anytime through this thing because it's linked to, again, my, ca my canvas in here on, uh, on, the, on the computer, actually my laptop also, my email, and also actually on my phone too. Usually I respond within 24 hours of your initial message, okay? I strive to respond within 24 hours. Most of the time, actually, I respond a lot less than that. I respond within the hours or less, okay? Now, within 24 to 48 hours, you should see a reply from me, provided your message is not on a Saturday or Sunday, okay? Even on Saturday and Sunday, sometimes if I'm not busy or outside driving or outside somewhere, I respond to you still, okay? But as a rule, expect a reply within 24 to 48 hours. If you don't see a reply from me, please remind me again, okay? That is really the, uh, the thing with it. So that is, most of the times, as I was saying, actually within the hours, most of the time I have my phone is uh, get a message, so I start right away and answering it, okay? Within minutes. But uh, that is how we work in here, okay? I get it everywhere, so don't worry about uh, not uh, missing your message. So again, this is where we want to be. Here is a syllabus, which is important, especially in the beginning of the class. This is my email address. You can still send an email if you like. At this point, I still don't have an office. This should not be an issue, okay? For you guys to reach me because this is an online class. We can still meet uh, online, okay? We can still open a Zoom session and meet and discuss things. As I was saying before, you have a specific issue that you're working on and it's taking way too much time. Seven minutes already and you're looking for resources, you can find it. 10 minutes, reach me, send me a message, okay? If you want to, we can meet. This is my office hours, we can meet, but don't be restricted with this hours too. Let's say for example, you're working on all of these hours. We can arrange to meet some other time, okay? Friday usually is, I know we have all kinds of meetings somewhere else with the faculty and everything else, but that should not be a problem, okay? We can meet on other times in the mornings also, unless I'm teaching, okay? Now, the class meets Monday, Wednesday from 11.10 to 12.35. That is basically when it's supposed to be meeting. Is it 12.35? Yeah, 12.35, that's correct. However, Monday is the only one that is going to be live. The other day, Wednesday, I'll be available if some of you are interested, because again, it's still uh, an online class. So there was that debate, should we do it on a schedule? If we do it on a schedule, then it's going to really be a problem because of the fact that uh, uh, this becomes not a, becomes synchronous and some of you will say, oh, I enrolled because it's online. That's the only reason. So there was this, this issue, issue, but I'm available also throughout that time to answer all of the class. So that's also a me time. I'm going to be here on Zoom, but you guys have the option not to attend it. It's not gonna be recorded unless it's an exam preparation or something else or something that has to do with the project that then I'm going to also record that session, okay? So this is to kick the week, to get started with the week, to do the work for the week. This is going to be, we're going to be me meeting around this time every week, okay? Unless again, we go back, fall back into the issue. If you cannot meet for one reason or the other, then this is what you get to do. Watch the recording, answer the prompts and so on and so forth, okay? Again, these are the stuff that is typical in here. The book is the sixth edition. If you happen to have an earlier version of the book, that's fine. Because most of the times the assignments are going to be uh, similar. And if there is a discrepancy, please let me know, okay? If it says page 357 and it's actually page 355 or page 359, please let me know, okay? So that is, it's going to be a little bit of difference in there. I provide the PowerPoints anyway for you guys to uh, watch these things and follow them. And we discuss these things part of Monday stuff anyway, so we're going to go through that. Again, these are some of the resources you have on campus. Participation is 10% of your grade. So these things are important. Unless you're planning to get a B or less, 
then you can skip the participation. So don't do that, okay? That's not good, okay? Uh, again, these are some of the policies that we're going to talk about too. And this is the, 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 uh, the topics that we're gonna be covering and the dates and so on and so forth. The final is a plan for August, I mean, for week 16. It's gonna be on, uh, not August, the final is going to be on uh, June, I mean June. Sorry, I'm still thinking spring. Going to be December. I'm gonna send you, of course, a message to that effect. Is December 6th? Yeah, December 6th is the final, okay? I'm gonna send you messages regarding uh, when to have the finals and all of these things. And that. So again, I'm trying to stick to the schedule as much as possible, but then we may move things because of, uh, oh man, this thing needs to be fixed big time. I think there is an issue with this one in here. Okay, I'm gonna fix this this stuff in here, okay? That's why it's tentative. Anyway, so let me go back into uh, the model, where we're supposed to be anyway, okay? So this is where we're supposed to be. The first thing that we need to do is, and you can see in here that some of them have check marks, like this one. It says, must submit the assignment. This one must be marked as done. If you don't do that, you cannot progress throughout the, uh, the, the, the model. So let me click on this one in here. I'm a student, of course. I don't really have time to read this. So I'm going to go to the next one. Well, I can't because I didn't do the other one, okay? So I really have to go back into it, okay? So let me go back into it now. Okay, so I have to really read throughout everything in here and understand these policies. And if you have any questions, please reach me. Here is my, my contact info in here. This is the College Standards of Student Conduct. If you have any questions about that, I'll be more than happy to help you with it, at least to the best of my understanding of it. And uh, we should have no problem with this one. The main thing that you take from this one is the following. This is an online class. It's different than face-to-face. -face. If we are face-to-face, -face, then usually when we talk to people, we are a little bit more cautious, okay? We have, first of all, a face attached to the person. We know their gender, or at least have an idea of what the gender is. We know how they look like. We know what they like. We know if they're in a good mood or not in a good mood. We can joke. We can choose not to joke. We can comfort them. And there are quite a kind of behavior that we do when we are in person. You are online. You have no idea what the other person look like. They may be sitting somewhere else. They may be somewhere else. They may be with a family who has an issue that they are trying to help them. They may be in the grocery store. They may be somewhere else. And you're trying to reach them and trying to tell them something. Okay, there is no face atta attached to the, to the name. There is only a name in front of you and you're trying to discuss something. Please be, kind, be, be, be mindful of this fact when you're typing, when you're writing, because we lose that human contact and we don't know with what we're dealing with. And it can be a problem because we have that tunnel thing that we're going through and we have a point that we want to, 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 to make and at that point, we lose sight of the fact that we're dealing with a human being. So that other things going on, just like you are, okay? Read through what you wrote. Especially if it doesn't make sense to you, or there is something in there that you suspect it may be an issue, read it. If you're still suspicious about it, read it out loud to yourself. Try to hear it from the vantage point of the person who's receiving it, reading it to himself or herself. At that point, if it doesn't sound right when you're, uh, or it sounds too strong, or it sounds too kind of uh, personal, then you might need to re reword the, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, what you're typing. I mean, you may have a very good point that you wanted to go across, but the way that you presented it sometimes may be an issue. So that is the time when you're going to rewrite it and put it in a better perspective, okay? That is the main thing that you probably need to take from this whole thing. 
so that your communications are respectful. If a person likes to be called one way, please address that person with that name. I just told you, my name is Jumoy Bozidi, and if you're trying to say it, you're going to struggle through it, and I hate to see you through that, so just call me DJ. That's one way of saying things. Now, also, a person might be referring a specific uh, way of being addressed. They may like to be called he, despite of what you might think, or like to be called she, despite of my, who might have the impression of, okay? So be respectful to what the people choose to be addressed and mindful of that because we're trying to learn, we're trying to be uh, good citizens, and that's the whole purpose of this. We have to be as model as possible, trying to represent this one, respectful of everybody, uh, encourage, the, encourage the, the participation of everybody. Everybody is welcome in this classroom. And the main thing in here is that as a society, as a human beings, we grow together, okay? So, this is what this policy is, understanding it, going through it. Now I can mark it done. That's the only way for me to proceed. So I can move on. Now it opened the next one with no problem for me. Okay. And this is the week discussion. It gives me the prompt in here. The recording for this of our live session will be posted below. Well, you are in it now, so for you, you don't care. For the people who are not live, they, this matters for them. They really have to watch the live, uh, the recording. Please watch the recording and answer the prompt or prompts that was or were, I should probably add correction here, raised in it. If you have attended the live session, you may skip watching the recording and answer the prompt below. So for you, you just go below, you go to the replies and that's it. For somebody watching this recording, they may need to, I mean, they, they first have to watch the recording. That is going to be posted here, okay? This is a graded assignment, so you cannot see your classmates' replies unless you first self do basically a reply in here. You cannot edit your replies. Those are the rules. So even it applies to the people who are watching live too. They cannot edit their replies in here once you post them, okay? Again, I don't have any replies. I just wanna see, curious, trying to see what's coming on next, okay? And that is because if you go back into this, this has no check on it. It was not required as part of this stuff. That's why I was able to move from this one to this one, although I did not do an airplanes. Now, this is a big deal now. So again, you can still move from this one to the next one, that's fine. But don't forget to do this. Again, I know that there is an issue with the date in here I need to fix. It's not due today. It's due August 26th, okay? So I know that uh, that's an issue. Hopefully I'll fix it, be fixing it very soon. Okay, anyway. And you know what to do in here, okay? Let me go to the next one in here. This is the assignment. This is wrong, okay? It should also say Saturday. I did not fix this one. This is an assignment that is due actually August 26th, the first part of it. And the second part is August 28th. I don't have time to read through this. I want to just skip to getting the maximum points of this assignment, which is 20 points, and move on. So let's do that. I'm going to go in here and show rubric. You should see rubrics for most of the assignments, especially homework stuff, in here, okay? I'm gonna show a rubric so that I can do and get exactly what I need to get. I need to get 20 points. For that, I need to get the 10 points here and 10 points here, and that gives me a total of 20 points. Where for this 10 points, I need, it says in here, it's due by August 26th, and I have to answer all four items included. What in the world are the four items? We're gonna find out what they are, okay? And then if I don't do that and answer some of them, I get seven points. If I don't do any, I'm going to get zero points. Technically, you could really grade yourself. I don't even have to grade it for you. You could grade it yourself by looking 
Did I meet all of the four requirements? If you did, you can grade yourself at 10 points. Okay. Did I miss one or two? Okay. Then I'm back into here. Did I miss them all? Don't do this by this day. Then I'm here. So technically I could grade myself in here. Nobody should grade this for me. Same thing. Two reply posts by August 28th. All criteria met. Some are met. Remember, there are two of them, not just one, two. And no peer replies. Then in this case, I got zero. So technically, I could grade this myself. So let's look at this thing in here. I really encourage you to read the overview, basically, what you need to do. By August 26th, this is the four criteria that I need to do to get my first 10 points. Okay. First one is please, please tell us a little about yourself, how you want to be called, and what interests you in this class. So first of all, my name is so and so, and this is how I prefer to be called. Okay. And please don't forget the pronouns too, so that people can address you correctly. Okay. Because it may be offensive to some people sometimes when you address them one way, yet they think that they should be addressed differently. So. In order not to get offended, please put that in there so that people can address you correctly, okay? Because they really don't mean any harm. I mean, it's just sometimes people have misconceptions that they don't see well, okay? So do that. And include a picture of yourself. I think there is a type one here, okay? And include, remove this. And if you can include a picture. Yeah, that's, that's uh, it was, written in the discussion things, okay? So you have to include a picture yourself. Please do not include those small pictures that you have them in the uh, in the profile, okay? Put something large in there and don't include your pet. Don't uh, take a picture of your cat or dog and say this is, no, a real picture of yourself. Again, we were talking about the communication and how important it is and how when we see each other on campus, we have this kind of uh, typical society behavior, but when we are online, things tend to be different. So we want to have a face attached to that name. You see me on the street and I see you, we recognize each other, or you see your classmate and you recognize each other. Not only that, while they're communicating with you, they know who you are by name, by how you prefer to be called, by your major, what you want to major at, and uh, they have a picture attached to you. Hey, so-and-so, I saw that your major is this. How did it go? Well, I enjoyed it very much, and now I'm doing this, or I did not want to f finish that. I changed majors, or so I like your major. I took hints from it, and now I actually take this major. So you can have those things in there, and it's still we are a community of uh, uh, learners together trying to discuss this thing. So this thing is important. Step one, step two in here is share a video about these people who think that the earth is flat. Go and find the link, find the YouTube, whatever you find in there and see what they are. Okay, share the link. Okay. That's important. If it's a blog, share the blog link. Then Try to see a couple of points that the person has raised that specifically state that the earth is flat. Some of these people can be tricky and they can be convincing and they have a bunch of arguments that they think are rational, based on rationale, and they think that these are based on correct science and so on and so forth, and they argue the earth is flat, okay? This is what the person thinks. And it may be even confusing. You may come out of this saying, oh man, is really the earth flat now? So it may be confusing. You are not, I mean, because some of this, they use fallacies, they use false arguments, basically, and use kind of twisted stuff, and they play with words, and uh, and they can confuse, just to confuse people enough, and once they do that, they put doubt in your mind, they, they won already. But it doesn't matter. You have to listen to them and see what they're saying, okay? And then to the best of your abilities, again, you're not expected to be expert in these things, but just to the best of your abilities, see if you can find some, some of the things that rebuke what they're saying, okay? Hey, that doesn't make sense because of so and so and so, okay? So that is really the first assignment that is due August 26th by 11 p.m. 
If you happen to be posting first, then there is nobody else to reply to. You're the first one who posted. How, what am I going to post? Here. After I gather all of the materials in here, this is where I post them. But since I'm the first one, there is nobody else to reply to. Check again. Until you have two people to reply to. Now, the next person who's going to post after you will find you, your post, and they can reply to you. But again, they have a problem because they don't have a second reply. That person also needs to check again. The third person who posts, they will have their post plus the two replies. They could fulfill the requirement right away. Okay. The fourth person, and this is where the problem starts to happen with the fourth person and beyond. The fourth person who posts, they will find, they will post their own. And they will find the first two, one and two, and they post a reply to them, ignoring the third one who was there. Don't do that. <laughs> Try to see who has already a lot of replies. Don't reply to them. Go to the person who has the least replies so that we have this spread uniformly as much as possible. And if you are the first one to post and you don't find anybody, and then you come back, do not reply right away to the next person and the next person because there are people in the bottom who have no replies. So try to spread this one as much as possible so that we have as everybody is fully engaged so that that person who has absolutely no people replying to him or her, whereas everybody else is applied to many times over. Okay, So try to be as, as spread as much as possible. Again, statements Again, in your replies, you're going to see if you agree or don't agree with the rationale that, uh, that was presented by your peer. Try to be in a respectful manner too. If you agree, yes, the points that you have raised are very good points and I didn't think about them. Now I know how they work. I'm glad that you raised them because I didn't know how this thing is. Or maybe, yeah, the points that you raised can be also interpreted in this fashion and maybe you can give a different perspective, okay? The things that are not accepted is yes or no, short statements like this one, or I agree and disagree, that is not acceptable. You really have to put it in a full sentence, okay? And did the resource listed sounded genuine and truly believable? You try to say, oh man, you came up with something that hit me. I didn't know that. That's kind of raised doubts in my mind or man, that looks phony. That guy is, looks like he's trying to sell you something. And that's it. Trying, trying to sell you likes because they know that there are a lot of people who are into conspiracies. So they want to put another conspiracy in there, knowing that they themselves don't believe in it just to build some followers on social media. So whatever you think is the case, okay? That's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be too long. It doesn't have to be uh, hard. It doesn't have to be, it's, it should be fun. Okay, but the point in here, I'm trying to get through this one in here so that we have that communication and getting to know each other. Yes, maybe. Yes. Okay, very good, thank you. <laughs> so. Once we're done with this one, obviously, if I try to move on, this is a required item. That's going to tell me again the same story as before. You did not finish this task. We did not post any replies in there. So unless I post replies, I cannot move on as a student to the next one in there. Okay. So let me stop sharing the screen. Here is the prompt for today. And it's going to be only for today, okay, from this point on. We're going to have those prompts that are coming at random just for today so that we have a, mechanic, a mechanism for our, our, our working, for uh, how to basically dynamic on how to do things. This is the, what we're supposed to be doing. Every week, we will have live sessions that can be recorded. If you attend live, you respond to that prompt, okay? If you at, don't attend live, you have to do two things. Watch the recording and answer the prompts, okay? So this is basically the item of today. So let me post it in here. This is my own words for it, okay? You may have a different way of saying it, okay? So live sessions are recorded. 
to attend live session you may post your replies with the answers right away Not you must watch a recorded session and reply accordingly. So again, this is my way of putting it. I probably have a typo somewhere in there. Okay. I don't think so, but if I do, please correct it. Okay. Uh, so once for, that's the advantage of being live, so you can get these things typed for you guys. Okay. But if you are, uh, uh, recorded, then you can see the chat. You don't know what's going on. So you're going to rely on your own thing. Okay. So let me go into the, uh, share the screen again. So where does this go? Let me go back in here to home. It's supposed to go in here in the live discussion week one. It's supposed to go under replies in here. Again, replies are only visible to those who have posted at least one reply. So if you have not posted anything, you're going to see and look exactly like this. It seems like nobody is doing anything. Okay. And that is misleading because that's how the system is set up. That's all. Because so that you don't see the recording in here and you skip it and you come in here and copy and paste or change it in your own words, okay? So that is a critical point in here. Once you make that post in here, you don't have to, uh, you, you cannot edit it anymore. If you do that correctly, you get five points. And this is exactly what is expected from you guys to do, is to type what I just typed for you guys on the chat or put it in your own words and post it in here, and you're gonna get five points for this one in here. Make sense? Okay, very good. So we are in business. We are actually in a very good shape. Okay. So that is how business is working in terms of the discussions. Of course, we will have quizzes, we will have assignments, we'll have homework and other things, and those they will have their own places of work with their place. Exactly. Kristen. That's all you have to do. Of course, today there is only one, but down the road you can have more, okay? Two or three or so on and so forth. Okay. So that is how the mechanics works in terms of these discussions. This is goes toward your participation grade. Unless, as I said before, you're not planning on participation. Jennifer, I think you have two sessions going on and that's usually what happened when you have two sessions, you're trying to talk and the other session is picking up the microphone and getting things confused. You can type this way if you really want to continue that way. Okay. Anyway, uh, uh, so this is one thing that I wanted to share to do today with you guys. The other thing in here, how much time? I still have about half an hour. So let me go quickly on the concepts that needs to be covered at least in the first unit, and then we can move on. So let me leave the student view in here. Let me come into the screen in here, and let me share with you the concepts that needs to be covered. Anybody confirm to me that we're looking at the PowerPoint Yes. 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 So this is basically the type of materials that you're going to be getting in here. Okay. And uh, 
And these are the concepts that you're going to be covering. Please do not reply on this one. There are a line on this one. You really have to go through the book in here and make sure you understand those concepts and go through the concepts. And I will have actually a little bit more summary of the outline of the course, basically what needs to go in it so that you will have the concepts themselves. There will be assignments based on those concepts, especially in terms of two types of assignments prior to the exams. And the two types are homework and actually quizzes too. So make sure that you have the materials fully covered and understood. If you have any difficulty with it, please let me know. When we come on Mondays, we're going to go through these concepts one by one and then discuss them in a summary, not in the how the book addresses them in detail. We may even do example based on uh, those things in there. And that's where most of our prompts will be coming from, okay? And like today, which was kind of an exception, it came from the general structure of how the class works, okay? So again, the first chapter deals with this concept, Aristotle on motion. This is the Greek philosophers. That idea stood for about 2000 years. So it held for a long, long time. And the idea was basically the following. The tendency of objects is to stay at rest. Here is my cell phone. I put it in my hand. Is it moving at all? No. It doesn't look like it's moving, is it? Mm -hmm. Or is it? Am I still sitting? Are you sitting still? I think that you are. We started this class at around 1110. Now it's 1202. It's almost an hour and the earth is spinning so fast and moving around its orbit actually around the sun. So it's not, we're not really sitting still. The earth radius is about 6,000 something kilometers, 6,400 kilometers. We're sitting right under radius. And when you consider the circumference of the earth, which is two pi times six, which is about 40,000 actually kilometers if you do the math. So we do 40,000 kilometers every 24 hours. So we're going super fast. Because if you divide just 40,000 divided by 24, that comes to about 2,000, just a little less than 2,000 kilometers per hour. That's about 1,500 miles or so, 1,400 miles per hour. Your car does not go 1400 miles, does it? Mm. It's unbelievable speed. I mean, 100 miles per hour is a lot, okay? Don't do it on the freeway. You're really risking your life if you do it that way. Forget about the police. The police is the last thing to worry about, okay? 100 miles is too much, let alone 10 times as much. And that's how fast we're moving. So in an hour, we moved about 13, 1400 miles. We were here where we were, and now we moved all the way across the country, the entire earth spin, so that we are in the, the place where the other part of the country is, Midwest is, that's in one hour. So we're not sitting still really. I mean, the idea was in, 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 in Aristotle's time is the tendency of the object is to sit where they are. It is an object and it's sitting where it is. If I move it, it's going to ultimately stop because it wants to stop. That's basically what the idea is. Take another object, this one also, the tendency of this object is to stay where it is. If I move it, it's going to move, but it's going to stop nonetheless. Albeit the phone will stop sooner than this ball, but they will stop nonetheless. That's the argument of Aristotle. The question that were needed to be answered right away is why the phone stops immediately and the ball takes a little bit of time to stop. Mr. Aristotle and the philosophers during his time, they had no explanation for it. So the best explanation they came up with is that some object remember to stop better than other objects, okay? Some of the objects like the phone have better memory than the ball, that's all. And that is, of course, nonsense. 
this idea is held for about 2000 years, of course, in addition to the four elements. And at that time, the pseudoscience, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, astrology was very strong. So basically there were all kinds of mystic ideas going on. I mean, I'm not sure to cut it there. Mysteries going on with it, and some more non basically science scientific ideas. Mr. Galileo, when he came in, he explained it based on the idea of inertia. What he did was he had an incline and he let the object on the incline, and the object rolled, of course, from the incline down to the flat surface and moved uh, to a distance and stopped. Okay. So what he did was he made the object smoother and he made the uh, surface a lot smoother than the first time and dropped the objects from, from the same height as before on the incline and it moved further and further distance. Then he said, okay, let me refine this thing even further more and make it even as smooth as possible. And he noted that the smoother the uh, surface, the further the object moves. So he attributed the idea of objects to stop to a force called the force of friction, because that's what he was doing with. He was messing with the friction. As he was making the friction less and less, then the object moves further and further. So then the tendency of the object is actually to be in motion, not to be a standing still, okay? Unless a force changes their state, like friction. That's really what causes this object to stop. The idea here is objects with more mass in them, they stop, they, it's very hard to change their motion. An object that was in motion, for example, a train versus a, a tennis ball, okay? Or, a, or a, a, any ball, soccer ball or a volleyball, moving at the same, dist uh, same speed. 10 miles per hour. It's not really a lot of speed, 10 miles per hour. It's very small speed. I mean, a ball going at 10 miles per hour, you can even grab it in your sleep, okay? Try to do the same thing for a train, even going at 10 miles per hour. Can you stop a train at 10 miles per hour with your bare hand? Don't, no. tr don't try this experiment. This is... Thank you, Alexis. Do not try this experiment. Inertia plays a major role in here, okay? Mass plays a major role, okay? So that is a concept that came about. The concept of inertia and mass are really interchangeable. Inertia is the ability of the object to resist change in motion. If the object was moving, it's very hard to stop it if it has higher inertia. And it's easier to stop it if it has lower inertia. If the object was sitting still or stationary, then it's very hard to move an object that has a higher inertia versus an object that has lower inertia. It has to do with the acceleration, really, the inertia. How much acceleration or deceleration you can give an object. That has to do with the, with the, with the inertia. Mass, which is something else, actually, is the amount of matter in it they seem to be the same thing. And I'm going toward the word seem because that's how we had them from the get-go. Those are two different concepts. You can find the mass of an object, for example, by weighing the object, okay? Because if I double the amount of stuff in that object, the mass doubles. So those are the concepts where they're coming from. Experience has shown that the two are the same thing. They use the same units. So if you have an object that is 50 grams, it has 50 grams also of inertia. And they are the same numerically. We didn't know why. It took the genius of Albert Einstein to come up with a rationale why both of them are the same. And we're gonna cover that later on. But for right now, we use the same number for both of them, okay? The concept of force is basically what causes the change in motion. Force can be a push or a pull force. And like the force of gravity, 
which is actually a distance force, or when I push on the object, like I was doing in the beginning, or pulling on the object, it's the same thing, okay? Can be a force of a spring. It can be a force due to charges when we're gonna cover those things. And the force has a unit. And the unit for the force is Newton. The force for the mass or the inertia is kilogram, okay? Those are the concept of that we need to be covering in this, in this topic in here. So you have a five Newton uh, force and another five Newton force working together becomes 10 Newton. Working against one another, they cancel each other. Five Newton cancels another five Newton and the object is under no net forces. That's what the concept of net forces is because the force is actually a vector, it has direction. Unlike the mass, which is a scalar, okay? So the mass is a scalar. And the force is actually a vector. What's the difference between the two? This is just a number. Okay, as a matter of fact, it's a positive number always for the mass can be a negative, some other concept can, like the speed, for example, is always positive. So scalar is just a number. So if you're driving 50 miles per hour, that's a number, okay? A vector is a number plus direction. Hey, you're driving on Interstate 8, going 50 miles per hour, does not tell me much, tells me how fast you're moving and that's it. It does not tell me if you're going east or west, unless you give me the direction. As a matter of fact, if you're walking at five miles per hour and I have no idea which way you're walking, I cannot go and meet you. Because you could be going this way, you could going that way, you could go this way, you could go in a zigzag pattern. So again, those are concepts. Displacement in this case is a vector, whereas distance is a scalar. Velocity is a vector, whereas speed is a number. What you read on your odometer is actually a speed. You have to look up to see which way you're moving. That is a vector. So again, the force is a vector. Because of that, it can be added in such a way that it cancels. If somebody is pulling five Newton this way, and another person is pulling five Newton this way, the net force in this case is actually zero Newton, okay? If you are pulling five Newton this way and the other person is pulling five Newton in the same direction, then in this case, the net force is gonna be 10 Newton. That is the difference between the two. The condition of equilibrium rule is that the net forces be zero. So in here, in order to have equilibrium, I have to have the sum of the forces or the net force is equal to zero. That's it. So if you pull an object with five Newton and somebody else pulls on it in five Newton, then that object is in equilibrium, which is a very important concept. Because this whole building that I am in, where you are, needs to be under no net forces. Otherwise, the building will move one way or the other. There is somebody is pulling on one side of the building very hard. He could move the building or even actually start it to destroy it, okay? Because the earth is pulling it on the other side and you're pulling on the other side, on one side, and you can present a uh, shearing on it. So it can really break. So again, it's important in here. The support force is really important concept because if I put this phone again, let me take this phone on my hand, I just said that it has weight and weight is what pulling it on the earth. So why is it not falling? It's because there is a support force from the hand in this case. What you are, where you are right now, you're sitting somewhere, there is a support force coming from where you're sitting and that is actually keeping you in place because the force of gravity from the earth wants to pull you all the way to the center of the earth, okay? So this is, sometimes we call it the normal force, okay? Sometimes we call it the normal force, which is a very important concept in here. 
When you stand on the scales, here is the scales. So when you stand on it, the force of gravity is pushing on the scales, the scales is pushing back. How much is the scale is pushing back? By the reading on the needle, okay? So if you're not going anywhere on the scales, you're not climbing, you're not going down, you're just sitting still, this is equilibrium. And the equilibrium requires that the net force is zero. Since you're pushing on the scale by your own weight, and the scale is pushing back by support force, the support force must be your weight too. So when you read on the scale, what you're reading is actually the support force, which must be your own weight. There is an interesting experiment, and we're gonna talk about this one down the road. If you go on an elevator and you stand on the scale, and if the elevator is not moving, exactly what you're looking at is your own weight. If this elevator starts to accelerate upward, then in this case, you're going to read more than your own weight. If you weigh, for example, 130 uh, 30 pounds, you're going to see the scale actually go, going more than 130 pounds, 140 pounds, 145 pounds. Did you gain weight all of a sudden? That's what appears to the scale is happening. You gained actually weight during that moment because of the fact that you're accelerating upward. And you feel it actually too. You feel like your entire body is going down when the elevator is going up, okay? When the elevator comes to a stop in the floor where you want to, you feel like you're sometimes dizzy because you feel like you're going rising. You feel lighter. And that is because when we're going to talk about this one down the road, you will feel actually a little bit less weight. Do you guys understand what I'm talking about? This concept in here of the scale that, I mean, did anybody experiment this one with the uh, elevators? not try it it's fun <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> okay dynamic equilibrium and like the static equilibrium is when things are moving this is something you can experience in your own car or uh, riding you have a cup of coffee you can put it next to you and the cup of coffee because the net forces are zero when the car is on cruise control actually you can see the top of the water not going anywhere. Yet there is forces, there is a force of gravity, there is a support force. But if somebody decides to accelerate or hit the brakes, you will see the coffee flying every which way. That is dynamic equilibrium, which is equilibrium in motion versus equilibrium static like a building, okay? Force of friction, I already mentioned that this is a force of contact, okay? Between two surfaces, between two objects in general. Depending on the type of contact, you have different kinds of frictions. You have static friction. I'm trying to move the desk right now. It's not going anywhere. That is because it's static friction. The desk is on the floor, and the floor is exerting a force back to it. This is static friction. When you move this object and it starts to move, and you can try it with a refrigerator, actually, when you move the refrigerator, it starts moving. That is called, actually, dynamic friction. There is other kinds of friction uh, that you can talk about, like the drag force. The drag force is, for example, for when a parachute opens, it's going to build enough drag in it so that at that point, the force of drag will cancel your own weight and you come at constant speed. That's why parachutes are used. And that's what you see behind me in the animation in there. That is actually a perseverance lander on, on Mars, which used the parachute that deployed just for it to decelerate enough to come smoother on the surface of Mars. And we use them actually on the Earth too. Okay, so that's also a friction too, which really has a problem. If you're gonna do the same thing on the moon, it won't work because the moon has, does not have any uh, atmosphere. So the drag force would not work on it. So why this technique works better on the Mars it does not work at all on the moon because of the drag force, okay? Obviously, if you do the same landing on Venus, you're gonna have a problem because Venus has far more atmosphere than the earth. So you really don't need that much uh, thing. Uh, probably the whole thing will slow down and so on anyway, okay? And in addition to that, there is viscosity. If you take honey, for example, and pour it, and if you take, for example, water and pour it, you see that the honey will go slower than the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, than the uh, water. And that is actually another kind of friction which causes viscosity. And this is exactly what you use in your engine. For example, if you go to a mechanic and you would want to change your oil, depending on the season, they have different oils, have different weights. Again, that is viscosity. 
So those are different forces of friction and they come in all kinds of shapes and forms, uh, the forms, this kind of frictions, okay? The one that Mr. Galileo was experimenting with was the friction of contact between the surface and the, uh, and the object. So when it was moving, it was dynamic friction. When the object stops, it becomes static friction, okay? Speed and velocity, I already talked about those. Acceleration is the rate at which velocity is changing. So what velocity is, and again, please refer to the notes of the class. Please refer more into the book. Velocity is the rate of change in position. So basically, how many meters are covered per second. That is the unit for it. Somebody is doing 50 miles per hour, obviously it's got less speed or less velocity than a person doing 60 miles per hour. And more velocity than a person doing 30 miles per hour. So that is basically, again, we're using miles per hour or meters per second. In SI, we use meter per second. In the units used by scientists, we use meters for meter, for distance, and second for time. And finally, the acceleration, as I was saying, it's the rate at which the velocity is changing with time. So when you are in cruise control, there is no change in velocity. So you have an acceleration zero. When you push more on gas, you gain more velocity. So you're doing 50 miles per hour, you go more into 60 miles per hour. How many miles did you gain for that? Let's say, for example, it took you 10 minutes to gain it. So you're going from 50 to 60 in 10 minutes in 10 minutes. So in this case, I would say the acceleration is a difference, which is 60 minus 50, which is 10 miles per hour, miles per hour for 10 minutes. Took you 10 minutes to do that. That means every minute you gain one mile per hour. Okay. Obviously, you can combine the units and make them into meter per second per second or meter per second squared. Okay. So this is in a nutshell, this unit. I know I went through it in here. I expect you guys to go through the, the notes in your book. And if you have any questions, you let me know. So this is an intro for the whole week, okay? There will be more assignments coming and there will be more questions related to this one. Sounds good? Yes. Very good. Okay. Again, welcome to Physics 110, Physical Science 110, that is, okay? And uh, I will see you guys again for sure on Monday next week and uh, potentially also this Wednesday too if you want to join us. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Let me stop the recording, okay?